Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are creating this kinetic type animation that is not just visually interesting but also fully controllable with a few sliders. Imagine having a powerful motion system at your fingertips, fully customizable, all without the headache of manual adjustments every time you want to tweak something. Sounds awesome, right? By the end of this tutorial, you will have all the skills and tools you need to create a visual just like this and even make your own version with different text, different colors or even images. So yeah, let's get it started. First things first, let's set up our composition. I'll give it a meaningful name to keep things organized. For the resolution, we'll go with 1080 by 1080 pixels at 30 frames per second and set the duration to 12 seconds. Once everything looks good, hit OK. Nice. Now, let's create our background layer. Head over to the top menu and select the rectangle shape tool. Before we draw anything, change the fill to black and the stroke to white. Here's a nifty trick. If you double click on the rectangle tool icon, it will automatically create a rectangle shape that matches the size of our composition. This works for any shape in the shape tool menu. So it's a handy tip to remember. With our shape layer created, let's name it background to keep things tidy. Adjust the stroke width to something higher to create a nice border around our composition. Looking good. Next up, let's add some text. Select the type tool and type a capital B. Make sure it's a nice size and use the Align tool to center it in the composition. With the text layer selected, move the timeline cursor to 1 second. Press P to open the position property and click the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Now, move the timeline cursor to 2 seconds and let's animate the text. Move the layer up along the Y axis until it's out of our composition frame. This creates a simple upward movement, nice. Now let's add another letter. Grab the Type tool again and type a capital R. Don't forget to center it using the Align tool so everything stays neat. Press P for position and at the 2 second mark, add a keyframe. Then move the timeline cursor back to 1 second and the layer down along the Y axis until it's off screen at the bottom. Move the timeline cursor to 3 seconds and add another position keyframe. Then go to 4 seconds and move the R layer up so it's out of the composition frame again. Great! we're creating a continuous flow of letters moving in and out of the frame. Now let's make the animation loop. Duplicate our first text layer, B, and move it so its first keyframe starts at 4 seconds. Then move the timeline cursor to 3 seconds and move this layer down, out of the composition. Trim your work area to 4 seconds and hit preview. At this point, the animation isn't very exciting yet, but don't worry, that's about to change. With all the layers selected, Press U on your keyboard to reveal all the properties with keyframes. Select all the keyframes and open the graph editor. Here, we can adjust our animation curves to make the motion more interesting. Start by converting the keyframes to easy ease and then adjust the handles to fine tune the motion. Give it some previews to see how your animation is shaping up. Once you're happy, trim your layers to 4 seconds. Now, let's tidy things up by pre-composing our layers. Select them all, right click and choose Precompose. Give it a name like Text Animation and hit OK. Cool, we're making progress. Now with our new precomp selected, press A to open the Anchor Point property. Increase the Anchor Point value on the X axis to shift our graphics out of the composition frame. Nice. Now comes the exciting part. With our precomp still selected, go to the top menu and navigate to Effect Expression Controls, Slider Control. Let's name this slider X underscore distance. With the slider selected, press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate it. Rename the new slider to Y underscore distance. Then copy the anchor point X value and paste it into the X underscore distance slider. And do the same for the Y value and the Y underscore distance slider. On the anchor point property, hold down the Alt key and click the stopwatch to open the expression editor. Using the pick whip tool, link the X value to the X underscore distance slider you'll notice both the X and Y values are now tied to the same value. And in the expression, you'll see something like temp, temp. Replace the first temp with the pick whip link to X underscore distance and the second temp with an link to Y underscore distance. Perfect. Now we can control the anchor points independently using our sliders. Nice. Now let's add some depth to our animation. Convert our layer into a 3D layer by clicking the 3D layer switch and use the dolly tool from the top toolbar to zoom out so we can see our visual again. Then select the orbit tool to adjust the perspective and add some visual interest. 
With the layer still selected, press R to open the rotation properties. Instead of using keyframes, we will use a simple expression to animate the rotation. Don't get me wrong, I love keyframes as much as the next motion designer, but sometimes expressions give you better and easier control. Hold down the Alt key and click the stopwatch for the Y rotation property, and paste in the following expression. Let me explain what this does. This line sets up a variable called duration, that controls how long each layer takes to complete a full rotation. We'll add another slider named Rotation Duration to control this. Duplicate one of the existing sliders, rename it, and give it a value of 4 seconds. This line introduces an offset amount, a delay we can control with another slider. Duplicate another slider, name it Offset Amount, and give it a value of 30. This lets us stagger when each layer starts its rotation, so they don't all move at the same time. Here, we're calculating the rotation over time. Time percent duration makes it loop continuously, while 360 divided by duration ensures each layer rotates at a speed that completes a full circle within the set duration. This line adds the delay based on each layer's position in the layer stack, their index. Each subsequent layer gets a bit more delay, making them start their rotations at different times. Give it a preview, and you'll see the layer rotating 360 degrees over a period of 4 seconds. Great! But here's the thing. Right now, our rotation loops over 4 seconds because our pre-comp is 4 seconds long. What if we want the rotation to last 6 seconds or even 10 seconds? Adjusting the pre-comp every time would be a hassle, and we don't want that headache. So let's make our animation loop seamlessly using time remapping. Right-click on the pre-comp layer and select Time Enable Time Remapping. This adds time remap keyframes to our layer. Move to the last keyframe, step back one frame, add a new keyframe, and delete the last one. We do this because the last keyframe is always blank, and we don't want that affecting our loop. Now, we'll apply an expression to the time remap property, to control the loop, and add a delay between layers. So paste in this expression. And here's what's happening. We set up the delay in frames and convert it to seconds. We define the loop's start and end times based on our keyframes. We calculate each layer's offset time to stagger their start times. Finally, we ensure each layer loops within the set boundaries, adjusting for any negative offsets. Create a new slider named Delay in Frames and set its value to 5 to match the first variable in our expression. This controls how many frames of delay there are between each layer's loop. By the way, if you enjoyed this tutorial and find it helpful, please consider supporting me on my Buy Me a Coffee page. For just $1, you get access to scripts that will improve your workflow and working files like the one from this tutorial. And your support really means a lot to me. It helps me continue creating content like this. So yeah, think about it. So let's go back to the tutorial. Now comes the fun part. Duplicating our layer to create a complex visual effect. Before duplicating more copies, let's make our life easier by centralizing our controls. Rename the top pre-comp layer to Control. This will be our master control layer. And lock the effects control panel for these layers so we can easily reference it later. Select the bottom layer, press E to reveal all effects and expand each slider. Alt click the stopwatch for each slider and use the pick whip tool to link them to the corresponding sliders in the control layer. Now all layers are controlled by the sliders in the control layer. With that set up, select the bottom layer and press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate it. And here's where the magic really happens. Keep duplicating until you have, say, 12 layers. You can add as many as you like. The system adjusts automatically to accommodate new layers. Give it a preview and you'll see a dynamic looping motion system that's fully controllable and highly customizable. The best part is that everything is controlled with those sliders on the top layer. You can play with the values to achieve different visuals without diving back into each layer. It's like having your own motion design playground. Super cool, right? Well, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed creating this motion system as much as I did. And if you feel like it, you can apply something like a 4 color gradient and make a nice colorful visual, like the one I showed you in the example in the beginning. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, please consider supporting me on my Buy Me A Coffee page. As I said before, for just $1, you get access to this working file from this tutorial and many others, including scripts that will improve your workflow dramatically. So yeah, it's a good deal, trust me. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, a great life, and I'll see you in the next one.